Hi, I'm Ned Kelly. Welcome to the Sunday Brunch. Today, very special location in the Jenny Han studio with Jen Han of jenspaintings.com. Hi, Jenny. Hello. Now, before the interview, Jenny gave me a quick little tour of her studio. So we're going to show you that, and then we'll sit down and do the interview. We are about to walk into the Jenny Han studio at the Bauer Building in Kansas City. That's a Jenny Han original hanging on the wall right there. And boom, what do we walk into, Jenny? What do we have right there? This is a piece that is almost complete. Everything that's progress. out pretty much right now are works awesome. in progress. Here's Jenny. That's okay. So works in progress, works, works in progress. In progress. Um, pretty much complete here, but... I like to let them simmer for a while and make sure they're done. Awesome. Awesome. Look at this stuff that's simmering a bit. The Jenny Han studio here. Ooh, look at all of these pieces. This is a commission similar to a painting I've done before. That's in progress. Um, I can picture something bouncing along top here. Right. <laughs> That's just a callback. That's a call. Ooh, look at this stuff. Ooh, so much delicious stuff over here. Yes. Some in progress. Yes. This is a commission I just finished. I think I've seen a video of this being done. Yes. Layers and layers of stuff underneath there. Lots of layers. They all have lots of layers. More works. And this is in studio mode, uh, work mode, not so much yes. for visitors. So she was nice enough to let us in. These are some of the pieces she has up uh, during First Friday, which she'll have on display. Right. Stop by First Friday Some each friends. month. She open studio. Friends. Not open today, but it is. Get ready, folks. We're going to interview the Jenny Han. All right, we're back with Jenny Han of jenspaintings.com or on Facebook. What is it? Paintings by Jenny Han? Paintings by Jenny Han, yep. All right, excellent. Thank you so much for doing this today. We're going to talk Thank about you. spirituality, We're going to talk about painting and the creative process. Cool. Because we all know that uh, painting or the arts or any form of, of creativity is indeed a spiritual practice for your own meditative state, for your own consciousness. Have you found that to be so? Absolutely. <laughs> um, those, are, those are two of my, that, that's, that's my passion is painting, art, and spirituality. So um, yes, for me personally, it is very much the case that art is a spiritual practice. It's a form of spiritual practice. I think it has been for ages in different ways, but for me personally, it's about the actual creative act, creative process um, is, is a, a form of meditation. Mm -hmm. It um, is a way that I learned to trust the process. It's a form of surrender, surrendering to something greater than myself. So there's different ways that the actual act of creativity can be considered a spiritual, a spiritual practice, if spiritual. you will. Now yeah. you are a professional artist uh, selling your paintings and other items, keychains. Um, I, I love the way the uh, Christmas ornaments turned <laughs> out. Thanks. And a large variety Thanks. of other stuff. And you do uh, the process painting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where it's not so much about the, um, the the finished product; it is entirely about the process for the the participant. The participants. Do you want to talk about that? Yes, absolutely. So my own studio work is one form of spiritual practice for me, but really, ultimately, process painting is all about the process. It is not about the product at all. The product ends up being more; it's a byproduct, really, um, that is more of a visual journal or you know, an act of meditation, but um, it's really about showing up to whatever is alive in you in the moment and getting curious enough to explore that. And it really takes you down this road that's almost like a waking dream mm -hmm. in a way, but it really allows you to access deep levels of one's own consciousness and to explore that through color. And I have done a process painting workshop yes. with Jenny, and yes, it was amazing. I'm no don't consider myself a painter at all, but I would definitely do right. this again. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah, and you don't have to be, you don't have to have any creative experience whatsoever. It's a, it's a very safe space. It's not about the, the discipline of painting or the skill of painting. It's a, it's the, it's a meditative process in itself. Right, right. 
Now, either in your own um, work, you know, the, the art that you do as an art form, or in the uh, process painting, what do you find can be a roadblock or a, a, a you know, a sand trap, that, that mm -hmm. a pitfall that might stop you in that creative flow? Anything come to mind? Yes. Uh, ego attachment. Ooh. It's a big one, yes. Um, anytime, for me personally, it plays out in the perfectionistic tendencies that I just naturally have developed throughout my life that um, has helped me get by, and that is a huge roadblock. But anytime we're attached, the ego is attached to the results, um, it really can just stop us in our tracks when it comes to embracing that creative flow. I believe that flow is always moving through each one of us, not just with visual arts, but in our lives, every decision we make. Um, and yeah, anytime we get the ego involved and we're too concerned about the outcome mm. or how we compare to others or how it matches up to a painting we did in the past, then it can really stop that and hinder, oh. hinder the creative flow. Fantastic. In improv acting, whenever I try to be funny, that's when I am the least funny. Right. When I'm the least right. concerned about the outcome, that then it is just the most natural, the most sincere. That's right. Um, right. So what are the, the solutions? How, how do you get, how do you break through that, that ego attachment? Well, I, I'm guessing that this might be similar to improv acting, but uh, for me and for in the studio, I believe that play and curiosity are two of the, um, the solutions for, you know, overcoming that, those, those blockages. And so if you think about it, you know, even being, even being creative can be a chore at times or can sound like a chore if you have expectations. But when you think about it, like what do children do naturally? What do we do naturally when we're interested in something? It's a form of exploration uh -huh. and you know, play and where does our curiosity take us? Like what do we most want to do in this moment? And if you follow that, then that can be a pathway back into just in the moment expression versus I need this outcome. Yeah, even even a curiosity about the the pitfalls or the feeling of whatever. Whenever I'm feeling mm -hmm. stuck or out of that flow, I would imagine if you can find a, yeah. a curiosity about that experience of oh, I'm feeling stuck. Absolutely, awareness is key, right? That's the starting point. And yeah, what it, what would it be like to explore that stuckness? on paper or on the canvas. Excellent. What does it look like? What does it feel like? What colors? What textures? That sort of thing. So the roadblock mm -hmm. or the, the, the stumbling block itself becomes part of the, the impulse and the flow forward. Wow. Nice. I like that. Now check out this quote uh, and you might recognize it. Um, this is somebody talking about meditation. Um, and they, they said that they do it because it is the closest thing to sanity that they feel, or it's a reason they keep coming back. Wait, is that me? That's you. <laughs> uh, we said that at least I wasn't sure if you wanted to share. But Jenny says that she does meditation, and she comes back to the Sangha, the group meditation, because that's the time of the week when she feels closest to something like sanity. Um, I did actually say that this Monday. I did not know that's who you were pulling up on your phone. Yeah, I was quoting you to you. And that quote made yes. me think of Tom Robbins uh, from from uh, the book Skinny Legs and All. In the haunted house of life, art is the only stair that doesn't creak. I'll say that again. In the haunted house of life, art is the only stair that doesn't creak. Do you find a similar experience with, you know, finding something that resembles sanity um, in, in art as you do in, in meditation? Absolutely. And it doesn't always look that way, especially with the process painting. It's because what can show up can look very far from sane. However, the act of expressing it, of purging that whatever insanity there is, um, it actually is very cathartic and therapeutic. So, um, yes, absolutely. In fact, I had someone ask me yesterday if I were to win the uh, Powerball this week, which is up to over a billion dollars it's, it's up to 300 bazillion gazillion dollars. <laughs> yeah. Would and if I... you divide that by every person in the United States, they each get a bazillion gadillion. It's an amazing <laughs> thing. I saw it on Facebook. Yeah. 
But the question was, would I continue to paint if I, if I wanted? Right. And the answer is yes, absolutely, because it is my form of sanity. It is my outlet, and it's integral, integral to who I am. So it's not like something I would just stop if I suddenly were a millionaire or gazillionaire. Yeah. So yes, absolutely. For me, there are two foundations uh, for sanity, <laughs> <laughs> or at least attempted sanity. Something that resembles and something close to sanity. Right. Whatever our agreement of sanity is, yeah. but it's art and meditation, creative yeah. expression, and mindfulness practices. Yes. Wonderful. To be a great artist, and Jenny Han is a great artist. She's amazing. She's exploding, blowing up here in Kansas City and around the world. She's got. Did I mention he's my friend? <laughs> yes. She's got <laughs> workshops. Uh, you'll be at Unity of Omaha soon. Yes. You've got shows showing there. You're in. She's all over the place. Uh, Jen'spaintings.com or Paintings by Jenny Han on Facebook. What else? Good plugs. Yeah. You can find me through all social media outlets through my website at Jen'spaintings.com. Excellent. Yes. Um, oh, I wanted to ask you, to become a great artist, do you, how important is the, the formal training? Because you did, you went through art school mm -hmm. here in Kansas City. I did, yeah, the Art Institute here. Um, mm -hmm. To what degree do you think is just a natural uh, part of what you were born with or, or, or gets trained mm -hmm. into an, an artist? In, I don't know, especially in painting, mm -hmm. but in any art form. Good question. Um, I feel like I've been unlearning my formal training for years now. However, that being said, um, it's important to have. It's not. It's not. It's not essential, but it is nice to have the basic training, uh, the elements of design, and you know, and to know that in your sleep, mm. so that you no longer have to think about it. Excellent. But is it a requirement? Absolutely not. That's the whole thing with process painting is I see amazing, powerful, and raw, heartfelt work come from participants who have no formal art training whatsoever. So really, it, it you know, and the whole art roots, raw art movement, I mean, the, the, it's, those, are, those are folks who have not had training in the formal sense. So Now what movement is that? The, the raw art the or art brute, um, visionary art. There's a, there's a bunch of different terms for it. There's actually a really cool museum in Chicago that kind of highlights this entire movement, which is really cool. Process painting could fit into that. Um, so it really depends on if you're going to try to fit into the, you know, snooty established art world that we have that's cool. shifting. Mm -hmm. So... I caught her with her wine glass. <laughs> it is a brunch show, so we're having snacks. And Sunday brunch? Sunday brunch, On whatever Wednesday day afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> so, Jenny, in, in acting, it's always important to go back and practice the basics. And I think that's true of most oh. art forms, well, for live performance art. Singers, uh, musicians, they have to go back and practice their, their etudes, their basics all the time, mm -hmm. and sharpen those skills. For, for visual artists, where you're kind of in your studio and you're doing your stuff on an ongoing basis, do you ever go back and do drills or exercises just to, to practice or hone the, the basic skills? Good question. Um, I don't so much. However, um, I do think it's very helpful to carry a sketchbook. I don't always. I used to all the time. I used to be sketching from life all the time. I guess it really depends on what your intention is. You know, I used to paint more from life. Now I paint more from the inside out, mm. kind of the inner landscape. So I suppose you could say that honing the skills for me would be through meditation, ah. through mindfulness practices, um, through process painting. So I don't necessarily do the practicing that I think you're talking about, like maybe color mixing or sketching from life, life drawing, drawing with a model. Um, those are all wonderful things, but from where I'm coming at from my work at this point and my intention with it, um, not so much. I wasn't trying to tell on you or get you in trouble. Yeah, right. All right. Um, well, <laughs> any, any closing thoughts, anything else um, you'd like to share with us today? Um, just, well, thank you, Ned, first of all. And just that I think that we all have a creative spark within us and... Um, what, however that plays out for us each individually, whether it's improv acting or painting or music,
cooking, you know, whatever it is, I think it's so important that we each nurture that and and find expression with it and, and overcome our own roadblocks, internal roadblocks, because I think that's one of the paths to a happy, peaceful world is each of us doing that which we're passionate about and what brings us alive. And the path to something that resembles sanity. Right. Resembles sanity. Well, thank you very much, Jenny Han, the artist, and you can find her stuff at jenspaintings.com. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you, Ned. And let's go to the camera scene. Namaste. Namaste. Now let's go. Now let's go! <laughs> Peace. Hey, thanks for watching. If you would like to support further works like this, please visit patreon.com slash nedkelly. You can become a patron for a dollar or more per creation. That's about five dollars each month. It is super easy fun and it makes a tremendous difference. Thank you again, my friend.